Hello, how are you doing? Mike Johnston here, and in this video we're going to discuss the graphs of sine, cosine, and tangent, and hopefully from these graphs you'll be able to determine what the their, their functions that relate to them, secant, cosecant, and cotangent, what they look like. So specifically we'll look at sine, cosine, tangent, their critical points and their domains and ranges, as well as something called period, and then we will, and then we will discuss some intricate values as well. So these are important for us to understand. We see them all the time in calculus and trig and, and even some advanced level calculus classes, but we see it in physics and we see it in chemistry. And you can use these trig functions to model a lot of real life circumstances. So it's imperative that you become intimately familiar with these special functions. So let's go ahead and look at our first one the first one in this video, let's go ahead and look at the sine of x. Let's go ahead and look at the sine of x. So at this part, I'm just going to discuss the positive x direction. So these functions are considered um, periodic functions, and they, they, they continue on from negative infinity to positive infinity. They're, they're periodic because they repeat themselves over a given period. So the first thing about sine is that sine will start itself here at the origin. And again, if you watched the last video, you discussed, we discussed odd functions and even functions. And in order for a function to be odd, it has to discuss the origin. And all trig functions are either even or odd. And so since the sine function starts at the origin and it continues both negative and positively, we can pretty much guarantee this is a odd function. And it is a odd function. So the sine function will start at the origin. It will travel up and then travel back down, and then it will come back up again, and it will end right here. So, so that's not very symmetric, but I was trying to show, hopefully we can see the symmetry there. Let me go ahead and try one more time. So it'll come back up, and it'll come down, and then it comes back up, and the period ends. So this is the amount of time it takes to make one revolution, and this is the y-axis, and that's the x-axis. There are four critical points, and these four critical points are as such, are labeled as such. So the first critical point I like to understand is zero, and then the last point here, the last point of the period is actually two pi. So it takes two pi, two pi radians for the sine to make one complete revolution. The two pi is also synonymous with a term we're gonna discuss called period. If we take two pi and divide it in half, we're going to get a value of pi. So 2 pi divided by 2 gives you a value of pi, and that's halfway through the graph, the first period. We take pi divided by 2, halfway between 0 and its intersection point, again, of the x-axis, is a value of pi over 2. So we recognize that we have 0 pi, pi, pi over 2, pi over 2 and pi, and then halfway between pi and 2 pi, 180 degrees and 360 degrees is a value of 270 degrees, also known as 3 pi over 2. So we see a critical point will exist at every pi over 2. So I always like to, to draw these and shade them in. So we recognize here that we're going to have a critical point here. We're going to have a critical point here. We're going to have a critical point all the way down here. And then our last critical point is here. This function sign has a max value of 1 and a min value of negative 1. So hopefully from this graph now we recognize that this max and min are at one and negative one, so we should be able to recognize the domain and range, I mean the range pretty rapidly. Also, this function continues. This function continues on on both the negative x side and the positive x side. So it actually continues down like this. So it goes down, it comes back up, and then it continues on, and then comes back down. And this also continues on the positive x direction. So it continues on and keeps going forever, ever, and infinitely long. Over on the left side, on the left side here, on the negative x direction, this will be negative pi over 2. This will be a value of negative pi. This will be negative 3 pi's over 2. And this will be negative 2 pi. And again, this should be, these should all be equidistant, but I am human, so slightly flawed, and I, slightly flawed, so I can't determine the values that are equidistant. Um, specifically now, if we look at this, I always like for us to discuss the, the domain of the function. So the domain of sine of x, the domain of sine of x is going to be all values of x such that x exists as all real numbers. So it exists from negative infinity to positive infinity. The range of our sine curve, the range of our sine curve is a value from negative 1 to 1. So if we write that in set notation, it'll be y such that negative 1 is less than 
or equal to y, which is less than or positive 1. Less than or equal to positive 1. So you could also write these in interval notation. So in interval notation, this would be, uh, let's do it up here, negative infinity to positive infinity. And in interval notation of the range, that would exist from negative 1 inclusive, negative 1 inclusive to positive 1 inclusive. So that's our sign. I'll be a little bit more expeditious with our cosine and tangent curves. But for right now, hopefully we understand our sign and are very intricate and are very, very familiar with this. So let's go ahead now and look at our cosine curve. Let's go ahead and look at our cosine curve. Let's say we have g of x is equal to cosine of x. The cosine curve is very similar to the sine curve. There's actually just a little shift. But for right now, we will recognize that it still has an amplitude of 1 and negative 1. But instead of starting at 0, 0, our cosine curve actually starts at 1. And it comes down like such. And then it bounces back up and ends up here. And this is going to be one full period or, or, or one, full, um, one full time it takes to make one revolution. This is one revolution. So this will be a value of 2 pi. Dividing 2 pi in half, dividing this graph in half, we're going to have a value of pi. Dividing pi in half, we're going to have a value of pi over 2. And then halfway between pi, halfway between pi and 2 pi is going to be 3 pi's over 2. So if we look at this, we're going to have some critical points as well. This cosine curve also extends into the negative x range. And you're going to see that it has those same critical values over here. So negative um, pi over 2. We have negative pi. We have negative 3 pi's over 2. And negative 2 pi's. So notice this is a mirror image on both the right side of the y-axis as it is on the left side of the, of the x-axis. And that's why this function is it actually is an even function. So whatever we see on the right, we see on the left. And that's why the functional value that is negated will be the same as the original function. So we can see that sine of positive pi over 2 is equal to 0, is equal to 0. And this is equal to the sine, I'm sorry, not sine. This is equal to the cosine, cosine of pi over 2. And that's going to be equal to the cosine of negative pi over 2. Cosine of negative pi over 2, that's going to be 0 as well. And this also extends in the positive x direction. So it continues on infinitely long. So this has a domain. And this has a range as well. The domain here is going to be the same thing as it was with the sine curve. It's all real numbers. And then the range also extends from negative 1 to positive 1 inclusive. So I'm not going to write the interval notation. I think we can all see that. Um, what I did mention before was something called the period, the amount of time it takes to make one revolution. So the period of this graph is actually going to be from 0 to 2 pi. It's going to repeat itself after that. So our period is 2 pi. And the period of the sine curve is also a value of 2 pi. The amount of time it takes to make one complete revolution or for it to repeat itself is a value of 2 pi. So lastly, let's go down to our tangent curve. And tangent is a little bit more in depth. It's not as, I don't want to say not as nice looking. Um, let's say we have h of x, and this is equal to tangent of x. Remember, as we defined earlier, tangent of x, by definition, is equal to sine of x divided by cosine of x. Sine of x divided by cosine of x. So in this circumstance, we recognize that we're probably going to have some issues with our domain because we have a function. We have a function cosine of x here in our denominator. And we know, as we saw prior, that cosine of x, that cosine of x does equal to 0 at several points throughout its domain. It does equal to 0. So that means that the tangent of x will be undefined throughout its domain. So we recognize that we're going to have to exclude some points. So if we have some values that cause tangent to not exist, to be undefined, then we recognize the graph is going to have some asymptotes. So we have to think to ourselves, we have to think to ourselves of when cosine of x equals to 0. That's my first question. I like to say to myself, when does cosine of x equal to 0? And we just saw that cosine of x equals to 0 at pi over 2. 3 pi over 2, negative pi over 2, negative 3 pi over 2. Again, it's probably going to equal to 0 at, OK, pi over 2 plus another value of pi. And this value right here, 
from here to here is a value of pi. It traversed a value of pi. So from here to here, I know it's a little bit longer, so it's equidistant. This will be another value of pi. Three pi's over two plus another two pi's over two. Two pi over two is five pi's over two. And then it's probably going to happen again. It'll be equal to zero again at seven pi's over two. So we can say that cosine of x equals to zero at pi over two, three pi's over two. Oh my gosh, it keeps going. Five pi's over two, seven pi's over two. But look, I also forgot the negative direction. It also equals to zero here at negative pi over two and negative three pi over two. So we forgot that and we say negative pi over two negative three pi's over two. So this keeps on going forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. These are ellipses. So how can we define this? So let's go ahead and say that cosine of x, whoops, I went too far. Cosine of x, this should be equals to zero when x equals to, I should have defined that, equals to zero when x equals to, we're going to say this is k pi over two where k is an integer where k is an integer. So k would be both positive and negative. Integers are both positive and negative. So it could be negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. So if we let k equal to, um, k equal to negative 1, we would have negative pi over 2. OK, that's all right. We can handle that. If k equals to, uh-oh, let's think about this. If k equals to, let's say, 2. We would have two pi's over two. Uh-oh, this is equal to a value of pi. But if we come back up here, if we come back up here and we look at pi, we don't have an issue with cosine here because at pi, cosine's negative one. So we can't let x or let k be every integer. K is gonna have to be, let's look at, okay, let's look at three here. So if k equals to three, we'd have three pi's over two. And three pi's over two are okay. Three pi's over two, we have a zero at three pi over two. So three's okay, but I bet four isn't, so two's not okay. If we let k be equal to four, we would have four pi's over two, which is the same thing as saying two pi. And two pi, at two pi, we realize our cosine curve is positive one. There's no issue there. But if we let k be equal to 5, OK, hopefully we're seeing the pattern here, then we would have 5 pi's over 2. So we'd have to say not where k is an integer, but where k is an odd integer, an odd integer. So cosine of x equals to 0 whenever k is an odd integer. So that's going to help us when it comes to graphing tangent of x. Because every odd integer of pi over 2 of k pi over two, we're gonna have a vertical asymptote. So let's go ahead and scroll down slightly and look at tangent of x. So when f of x, well actually no, we said h of x, I believe. When h of x equals to tangent of x, we're gonna have some issues at every value of pi, k pi over two plus another value of k where k is an odd integer. So here, we're gonna have an issue of pi over two we're gonna have another issue at three pi's over two. We're gonna have an issue here at negative pi over two. We're gonna have an issue at negative three pi's over two. We're gonna have another issue at five pi's over two and negative five pi's over two. And at these values, because these cause tension to be undefined, we're gonna have vertical asymptotes. And we denote graphically vertical asymptotes by these vertically drawn dotted lines. So here, I won't draw them all, we're going to have these vertical asymptotes. So just to help you out, we're going to state, I'm just going to state, you can plug in values to determine this, but sine will start down here, very asymptotic at negative pi over 2, and it traverses the origin and then continues on to infinity, becoming asymptotic at pi over 2. And then it repeats itself, it repeats itself, so it comes back down here. And I bet you can all guess that it intersects, it intersects the x-axis at hopefully we all can recognize halfway between pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2 is a value of pi. And it does the same thing. And it does the same thing. So this will not have a domain that's all real numbers. I'm trying to draw that as best as I can. It will not have a domain that's all real numbers. So let's go ahead and identify the domain of tangent. The domain is going to be x such that x cannot exist as any value of k pi over 2 k pi over 2, where k is an odd 
integer. So it cannot equal to k, k pi over 2, where k is an odd, where k is an odd integer. The range of this function, hopefully we can see the range starts down here at negative infinity and goes all the way up to positive infinity. So the range of this function is going to be y such that y exists as all real numbers. And notice here that this graph repeats itself from here to here. It repeats itself from here to here. So every time it repeats itself, we define the period negative pi over 2 to 0 plus another 0 to pi over 2. Pi over 2 plus pi over 2 means that its period, or how long it takes to repeat itself, is a value of pi. So tangent is slightly different. Well, it's actually very different than cosine and sine. Tangent has a period that is half that of cosine and sine, and its domains and domain and range are very, very different from the two prior.